William, what, what's all with us? Oh, I have an idea for the holidays. Hear all about it next on Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. We are in the throes of the holiday season and we're kicking it off at Terra Casa in Damascus. In fact, later on in the show today, I'm going to be talking to Diane about all the great new stuff they have available here. Things like these wonderful candles, which, no, it's not Christmas magic, it's a remote control. <laughs> also coming up in the show today, we'll be sharing with you some new garden books from Timber Press. But coming up first, we are going to take a visit to a holly farm. So I am standing in acres and acres of holly. I am here with Steward of Olson Farms. And first of all, I have to say, how many varieties are there? I only see two that look different, but. Well, we have two varieties here. We have the green holly and then our variegated. And this variegated this year is lighter because it kind of goes on an annual cycle. Okay. Well, I wondered because I didn't see a lot of berries yeah. on this. Yeah, now our other orchards have a big crop of variegated. But this is light on this Friday. And you were also going to show me where the, the buds are for next year. This is that what they are? Yeah. You can see right in here. Oh, wow. I see them. See the little tiny buds. Yeah. And those will be coming on it in May of, of uh, next year. And the next year, this will have a lot of berries. This will have a lot of berries on it, yes. However, not a problem over here. Not Look a at problem these on this berries. Green. This, this baby <laughs> is, is loaded up, yeah. And it's uh, uh, this is what we love to see. This is what Holly's all about when you see those bright, red berries and that dark green foliage and shiny starting and about this time of year Stuart is when you actually do start, start pruning first of November sell. yeah yeah and how do you do how do you go about it is it a specific thing well basically I just wear some rubber gloves uh -huh. and I have my clippers and what I'll do is come back here and cut this stuff in here like this uh-huh and, and Holly loves to be cut so don't worry about you know you can come in here and cut this stuff and and, well, it uh, looks like you're doing a specific thing, but you're really, it's not all that specific, no, is it? No, no. And see what I, how those beautiful sprigs are like that of yeah. holly? I mean, and that's, that's Christmas right there. That is, you're right, yep. you're right. And then I noticed, though, that right behind us here is this massive one that has nothing on it but leaves. That's the male tree, and that's the one that pollinizes, and that's what gives us the berry crop for the, in, in May, for, they start For both the variegated and under. And, and okay. both varieties, yep. And yep. then as a homeowner, you really believe that to make these work, you have to prune them. That's you the gotta key. prune your holly, and that way you keep the, the disease problems down. Some years you'll see where there's a lot of, uh, of, uh, lo a lot of leaf drop yeah. and that kind of stuff. And what, what that is, that's called leaf phytophthora. But if you can cut them back and give that airflow, that's what's so important. So it's actually good for the plant, it's not only for the production, but just to keep it healthy. Yep, yep. Well, you know, now that you've showed us about those and showed us how you guys actually do the cutting for them, I'm going to take a trip over and talk to Monique about what you can do with this beautiful holly. Thanks a lot, Stuart. Oh, yeah, thank you. Okay, well, now we've heard about how you grow holly and how you cut it and all that stuff. Now we're going to talk about what you can do with holly. I am here with Monique, and Monique, this... This is really beautiful. It looks like a lot of effort and time went in it, but this is pretty simple to do in your own home, isn't it? It is. I just take holly out of the out of our yard and combine some crafts from the craft store. And that's what I really like because a lot of this, several people probably have homes that have you know different types of conifers uh, and and holly in them. This is a great idea just to go out to your yard, clip some stuff, and bring it in. Yeah, you can use any kind of greens to add with your holly and. You can use, you know, fake flowers if you want, or real flowers, doesn't matter. So then, what else do you do? Over here, there's a couple of examples. Tell me, tell me what, like this, it looks simplistically beautiful again. This is just a basket I'm going to use um, for holiday parties or around the Christmas tree in the house. I put some holly in there, some pine cones, and that's it. And that's all you did with yeah. it. Now, if you're actually going to create something that, that like this looks much more florist-esque right. to me. So. I also notice it's in a vase, which I'm assuming has water in Correct. it. Correct. Tell me about how long, because in my mind, Hollywood's, oh, that'll last forever, but it also is a cut live plant. So. Correct. You have to treat it like a cut flower. So okay. if you want it to last in a house, um, you're going to need to put it in water, and it'll last about 
two weeks or so, however long a normal cut flower would last. If you have it outside um, in a swag or something, that's going to last a lot longer as long as it's cold. So if you're just going to use it for things like we've already looked at in those other two examples, that you might want to wait until like maybe a couple of weeks before Christmas yes. to do that. Yeah. And then I noticed that there is a great swag back here, and you're yes. going to show us kind of how to make that, aren't you? Yeah. So this is um, just some of our holly. We have variegated holly in here and regular holly and we just put these together and tie a little bow on there and you can put it on your front door and it really is that simple because if you flip it over you can see it's just a handful of greens yep any kind of greens you want and then you put a little wire around it and a bow yep. and it's ready to hang up yep now monique this is really easy to build show us how to do it real quickly well i just take um any kind of greens you want uh -huh. i have some uh, cedar and some pine and you just take them layer them on top of each other put your holly in there i like to have both colors of holly yeah and make sure you have lots of berries in there like that you can add some little pine cones if you want you can add ribbon whatever you'd like to match your house and, and your so wh where can people get this you can get this at any local grocery store flower shop um you can't really come to the farm and get it we're a wholesaler okay but you can check out our website and and then just gather this up, take it home, make it yourself, and you've yep. done something you that easy. put on your front door. Yeah. Well, you know, this is, a, this is a really fun story. I love talking about holly because it's a beautiful holiday plant. But then uh, we want you to go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to Olson Farm website because next spring we're going to come back out here and do an amazing story on peaches, which they also grow. Monique, thank you so much. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Is your garden in need of refreshment? Hi, I'm Sarah, and there are plenty of things in bloom at Portland Nursery. Come check out our beautiful fall color to perk up your garden. At Portland Nursery, we consider fall the second season, and the gardening opportunities are endless. Establish next year's trees, replace lettuce and greens, or get a jump on onions and garlic. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people, on 50th and Stark and 90th and Division, or at PortlandNursery.com. Ten days, nine nights, and one great trip with your Garden Time gang. Travel with William and Judy on our next Garden Time tour this February in beautiful Hawaii. Space is limited. Book now. Go to GardenTime.tv slash tours for all the details. I am at Timber Press, Portland's own publishing company with Tom. And Tom, you know, the holidays are coming. The weather's getting bad. We need to be inside yep. from the garden. Yeah, we so do. We need some books. We do. And you have a lovely selection. So let's start talking sure. about them. Sure, sure. Well, first is Nature's Temples, The Complex World of Old Growth Forests by Joan Maloof. Joan is a biologist and the founder of the Old Growth Forest Network. She's really committed to preserving the small remnants of old growth forests that are left in this country, in North America. And this is a fascinating book because she explains in very non-technical language just how rich and complex these ecosystems are and they're, they're amazing and chapter by chapter she talks about the insects, the birds, the mammals, the invertebrates that all go to make this rich lush complex ecosystem and at the very end she talks about why old growth forests are, are important to people um, and it's not just that they sequester carbon and that produce oxy oxygen, which of course they do, mm -hmm. but they, you know, they enrich our souls and our, and our intellects because there's so much going on and because the creatures that live in these places are so fascinating. Yeah, and it is something to go. You do feel so um, calm and at peace when you go to these kind of forests. Exactly. Wonderful. Well, it's great to have a book about it. And then, well, we have to talk about wildlife. Sure, sure. Uh, wildlife spectacles, mass migrations, mating rituals, and other fascinating animal behaviors behaviors by Vladimir Donets, uh, again another biologist, who has explored the fascinating phenomena we see in the natural world. Mass migrations of, of animals, um, mating rituals, uh, survival strategies, feeding strategies of all sorts of animals, birds, uh, mammals, insects, fish. 
Um, and he's really examined these in detail. In fact, there's a little section on the Vox of Swift he, oh, right here right in Portland here. Uh -huh. at the Chapman School, yep. Um, but he really explains to you um, why these behaviors take place. And at the end of each chapter, there's a section on where you can go Ooh. to observe all these fascinating behaviors. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. Very nice. And so we have something, too, for the craftspeople. Yes, in our, if in you're crafty. Viewers. Plant Craft, 30 Projects That Add Natural Style to Your Home by Caitlin Atkinson. Caitlin is a floral designer at Flora Grub Gardens mm. in San Francisco, one of the coolest <laughs> garden centers in the country. And Caitlin has got a great eye, and she has put together 30 projects that you can do yourself involving both dried and living plants. All sorts of fascinating things. You know how uh, putting living plants on your wall has become such a thing? Well, she's mm -hmm. got several projects that show you how to do that. Um, beautiful swags you can put on your mantelpiece, wreaths you can make, uh, all sorts of terrarium kind of projects, and you get detailed instructions about each one. Some assembly is required, <laughs> although it's not like trying to build an Ikea shelf. Uh, much <laughs> easier than that. But all the materials you, do, you need, and the, the styling is really modern and clean and interesting, and I think lots of people really find these projects really fascinating and fun. Yeah, and even to give us Christmas gifts. Exactly. Great. Ah, uh, this is going to be the coolest one, though. Yes. The Bold Dry Garden, Lessons from the Ruth Bancroft Garden. Um, Ruth Bancroft is a wonderful woman. She is now 108, oh. still with us. Mm. She created this beautiful dryland garden in the East Bay, in the Bay Area. Um, and this is the story of the creation of that garden, which is now owned and run by the Garden Conservancy. So anyone can visit. But it really is a masterpiece of how to use dryland plants in an artistic way because the, the garden has grown up over decades and so you get the wonderful story of it, how she experimented with different kinds of plants, how she learned and, and was able to use them in such a beautiful artistic way. And also you get uh, profiles of the various plant groups that she's used. So if you want to try to create some of these spectacular effects in your own garden, you can do that. But th the center of the book is this wonderful story about the creation of the garden and how she persisted and really made this beautiful, drought-tolerant masterpiece. Uh, what a testimony to a gardener and to remind us um, we can do it in our own yard, too. Exactly. And then what is this last one for This us? last one is a great uh, garden gifty book for the gardener. Uh, garden Flora by Noel Kingsbury, The Natural and Cultural History of the Plants in Your Garden. It tells fascinating stories about all the most popular garden plants, where they came from, how they changed over the years through hybridization and selection, um, why some of them have stayed popular, why some of them have fell out of favor. But the stories are all wonderfully told and there are great illustrations, both contemporary and period. And so if you're interested in plants at all, if you're, if you're just an ordinary gardener, you will find plenty of fascinating material in this to, to keep you occupied during the long <laughs> days of winter. Definitely. Well, you know, this is a wonderful selection of books here at Timber Press. Just a small amount of their whole catalog. If you have any other questions, please go to Garden Time. We'll click you over to their website and really check out those books. Great for gifts and for yourself. Thanks Great. so much, Tom. Thank you, Judy. So it's a real delight for me to be here with Don Sprague and we are at Garden Gallery Ironworks. And Don, we are going to be talking about your Christmas open house, right? That's correct. So what I love about this room, this is kind of your, kind of your old-fashioned country home room where you have all kinds of great stuff. Let's talk about what's in here. This this room was created for the farmhouse style. Yeah. It's a farmhouse style decorating and it's really popular right now. A lot of gals and guys like it. It's a kind of memory of the past, yeah. you know, and it brings back it brings back the good old days and uh, a lot of this stuff is reproduction and it's just it's just great for decorating. And you have this space here year round, but in the holidays you really switch it up, don't you? Yes, we totally transformed this whole room into Christmas for the holidays and, and it's all about farmhouse. Every corner you look at it is just full of past memories. And one of the things that I love that you do is you take things like what's in front of me right here which is really a year-round decor product isn't it and then tell us what you do to it to make it Christmas. Yeah, well this is a piece of, of it's a wood frame and then it's got some uh, wrought iron uh, work in the middle of it uh -huh. and then we took and we made one here this one's a little larger and we have them in all different sizes. we have a full collection of, of these items and and we took and transformed it into a piece of Christmas decoration it's got some garland on it and we use that for the backdrop and then we just come down with some tables and, and it really is it's just you like you would decorate a tree with ornaments you just put garland on it 
but the ornaments on that, it's really charming. And most of the items in this in this particular area right here are items that you can give as a gift and people can use yeah, yeah. almost year round. Which really extends the value of the gift a lot. Totally. Now, what are you holding in your hand there? This is a new item that we came up with this year and it's a, it's a door hanger. And what we did was we, uh, we purchased these. We don't make them, they're made out of a plastic material. Uh -huh. And so then you can take and you can decorate them. And let me show you one here that's decorated. <laughs> and I really love what you've done with it. The staff here is just incredible. They I gotta are. just say, you know, I applaud our staff. They, they do such incredible work. And they took, and this has got some uh, artificial garland in it. So it can be in, indoor or out. Nice. And then uh, you can drop a candle in the back or you can do a lot of things. They use, uh, some of them will be made up with uh, gifts for like uh, with wine bottles in it or if you want to do a shower or something like that. There's so many different things you can do. And then after the holidays, you can move on to Valentine's and uh, Easter. Because you can even put plants in them too. So oh yeah. You if it's not a holiday, you yep. can still have beauty on your front yeah. door even with them. It's, it's a great gift that can be used year round. Nice. Now you also have some other great stuff happening in another part of the showroom. So let's uh, take a walk over there, shall we? Hey, let's do it. So now Don, we left the, the farmhouse area of your showroom and tell me where we're at now. We're, we're back in the front room now and it's it's fully decorated for, for Christmas here and we've got over 12 fully decorated trees and one of them that I really like is this uh, is a sugar pine tree right here behind you there and what we've done is we've taken a bunch of these sugar pine nice. cones and then we've drilled them and put little hangers in them and then the staff has taken and decorated them all up for Christmas and then there's little hangers on them so you can hang them around perfect or you can hang them on a tree or you can do whatever you like with them so tell me what's going on today oh, because man. there's a lot of things happening out here. There's a lot here. going on. Uh, the first 50 people get a free gift. Uh, there's a huge discount going on for your entire purchase. Uh, we've got lots of refreshments. Uh, I better check my note here. <laughs> uh, oh, you know, and we're doing a Christmas wreaths again this year. Oh, the, cool. The Oregon wreaths and that we're shipping anywhere in the United States, uh, excluding Alaska and Hawaii. But uh, there's lots of, lots of different styles to pick from. They'll be all freshly made. And they, they can find everything that's happening if they go to your website, right? Yeah, go to the website. Yep. All right. Well, you know, it's the holidays, and we absolutely thoroughly enjoy celebrating all of them. So uh, for more information on everything that you can come to today and see what's happening and buy some wonderful things, some great apparel, it's all right here. Go to Gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website. Don, always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you. Great. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. I've been a Capital Subaru customer for 15 years and one of the main reasons is because they treat me well and I want to shop local. The service department is excellent and I always feel like I'm taken care of here. In fact, they call me now even after I've driven off the lot to remind me to come in and get my car washed. That service. One of the reasons why I like coming to Capital Subaru, actually, they have this the dog area. And I can just walk my dog around the whole area and we can enjoy the outside. I got it my way on the parkway. Don't let the cold and wet get you this winter. Warm up to a season of heat with Grimm's Fuel. Grimm's has plenty of wood and heating oil ready to deliver to keep you warm all winter long. Stay warm and cozy with Grimm's Fuel. Ten days nine nights, and one great trip with your Garden Time gang. Travel with William and Judy on our next Garden Time tour this February in beautiful Hawaii. Space is limited. Book now. Go to gardentime.tv slash tours for all the details. Well, it is such a delight for me to be here with Diane, and we are at Terra Casa. And you know, Diane, I love coming here because for one thing, it always smells so good in here. I love it does, that. I know. <laughs> so today you are going to be telling us about some stuff you have in. We're going to talk about lights and some beautiful bowls and stuff. So let's just jump right in there. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, new things this year that are different than we've had in the past. Um, we're kind of focusing on some specialty lighting this year. Of course, we still have our flameless candles, which we're using in our lanterns, um, in the candle abras, which of course we dress up with all of our sprays. Uh, but this year we're focusing a lot more on on the LED lights yeah. and using them in the bowls um, with the ornaments and Which is beautiful spheres. And simple, isn't I know, it? and you can take any sort of bowl. That's just a little ceramic bowl there. Yeah. The glass bowls that we wow. sell, you can do so many things with, and then you can also use them 
for serving yes. on a buffet. Yeah. It's a gr they're great bowls for s this kind of looks like a slate. It too. does. Isn't That's that what pretty? I and you know if you're really fancy, which I'm not, you could do food in one and the ornaments in the other. You anyway. could, you could, wow. or candles in one and yeah. food in the other. Lovely. Exactly. Yes. Lovely. Now the lights, I, I love. These oh, right here, what are they? These are fabulous. These are called a water motion light. So in this, there is a liquid. This is water inside. And then the LED light um, filters through and, and it, it just keeps moving. And they're just gorgeous to look at. Yes. <laughs> they really are cool. <laughs> they're mesmerizing. They yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, for a lot of children, that could be a perfect idea for the holidays. It is, but I'll tell you, I think, I think adults like them more. <laughs> it's true. I, I'm <laughs> looking do. at them. And then I see over there some wonderful candles on oh, an iron tree. These Tell are fun. Those. So last year we tried a few of these. Um, back in the olden days, they actually <laughs> put candles in their Christmas trees. Is that still amazing sure to us that they Not sure that's a really that? good thing yeah. to do. So this year we carried this little, and this has a, a, oh, a, a remote control that turns that them all on and off at the same time. Wow. And this is a smaller version of two sizes. What's kind of cool, they have a self-correcting leveler too on them. So if you're putting them on something that is not straight, um, this swivels a little bit at the base so you so can straighten them up. Or nice. you can make them crooked if you want them Wh to look I mean, crooked. Why not? <laughs> much, much safer than a real candle yes. in your Christmas tree. Yeah. And you even have some, some other great lighting ideas. We do. We have um, a different type of pendant light. They're a giant ornament. They're lit from the inside. And throughout the store, we have a, a other types of lighting. Um, some of them are vases with little scenery things cool. on them. And um, we'll show you those throughout the store. But there's a lot of different things we're doing to light up your home this right. winter. And then what else do you have? So around, we did a, several different bowls for you. Uh, we did these some of these with the ornaments, our regular spheres that we carry. We actually tucked some of these lights inside the spheres oh, here. Clever. This is really pretty. Very clever. So it glows from the inside. We took one of our regular baskets and made this into a little bird sanctuary. Yeah. Isn't that cute? With snow. And then over here we kind of have a more formal look with the black and white with the candle in the middle. Wonderful. And then we have a very simple elegant with the gold, the amber, um, a few ornaments. We put a little, um, we put a little mushroom in there too. And it's, there's just so many things you can do. And throughout the year, trading them out to whatever season yeah. they'll work with. And you can take, put fruit, em, fruit in them in the, in the uh, springtime. Um, and you know what succulents I really love? in the spring. I love that even, even with the holidays or even without, lights always add that really oh, cool sparkle they to are. things. They're very fun. It just adds a, a beautiful element. I think people really, it's very visible. Nice. Well, you know, I really do love coming out here. There's always such wonderful things, both outside and indoors. So at this time of year, if you're thinking, I want something a little bit different for the holidays, come on out to Terra Casa. You can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click over to their website and find out exactly how to get here. Diane, thank you so thank much. Thank you, William. Standard TV and Appliance Black Friday deals going on now. Don't wait. Black Friday deals are happening all month long at Standard. Save big on a stainless steel Samsung French door refrigerator, only $9.99. Get a Maytag front load washer with steam, now only $4.74. Or a deluxe stainless steel Whirlpool dishwasher, only $2.79. Plus, save $700 on a Simmons Beautyrest Queen mattress. Hurry, Black Friday deals won't last long. Standard TV and Appliance. Don't let the cold and wet get you this winter. Warm up to a season of heat with Grimm's Fuel. Grimm's has plenty of wood and heating oil ready to deliver to keep you warm all winter long. Stay warm and cozy with Grimm's Fuel. The holidays have arrived at Garden Gallery Ironworks. Stop by our store in Hubbard and see the season in a whole new light. We have a wide selection of new and unusual gift ideas. From stocking stuffers and hostess gifts to large decor pieces, we have thousands of items to choose from. And don't forget the outdoors. We have gifts for the gardeners, too. We also have a large selection of Kelly Ray Roberts items for you to take home. Give the gift they'll thank you for from Garden Gallery Ironworks. We're going into the stormy time of the year, so it really is the time to look at the trees around your home. I'm with Logan from Bartlett Tree Experts, and really, what should we be looking at at those trees? Well, we want to start from the, from the ground up. So we, we want to assess the root system. Um, we, we want to make sure that there's you know, a, a visible root collar, and then move up the trunk and look for any defects in the trunk. 
and then you know up into the canopy of the tree and look for you know dead branches hanging branches um, maybe branch defects which we can go over in a little bit um, or you know if there's been a history of branch failures in the tree you know for instance like this maple behind us mm -hmm. um, you know it's lost several large uh, branches, you know, due, due to decay and, you know, from, from windstorms that have moved through. So what should we do if that was in our yard? What should we do about that tree? Well, we, we would definitely want to take a little closer look sure. at it and, and determine whether this is a tree that we would want to save or not. So one of the options is always removal. Um, but the other option is, is to, you know, uh, prune the tree, you know, remove some of those hazardous branches reduce the length of some of the longest overextended branches and possibly install some cables. Ah, oh, really? So that would make it safe for your neighbors, for your home, for your family? Exactly, yes. Uh, and I know that you have some other samples in another part of um, this area here, so let's go look at those. All right, okay. let's. Now, Logan, this one has like a split trunk, so should we be worried about it? Yes, th this is a tree that you know would warrant you know further investigation. So, so you do want your arborist to look at this tree. So, a lot of times when we do have these large co-dominant leaders, they're not as strongly attached as mm -hmm. you know a, a, a traditional U-shaped branch connection would be with interlocking layers of you know branch and trunk and branch and trunk. You know, this has. You know, just two trunks pressed up against each other. And actually this one is growing bark on the inside of that attachment. So, so they are just kind of you know, pressed right up there. Well, this one is in the middle of a field. So really mm -hmm. we wouldn't have to worry so much. If it does cleave apart, it's not mm -hmm. going to fall in a house. So we can exactly. just kind of monitor it. Yes. But you know, th this would be a good one if it was you know, next to your house to you know, uh, subordinate one of the, um, the co-dominant leaders. Mm -hmm and possibly install you know, a cable support system in, in the top of the canopy. Uh, and then the one next to it has a lot of dead wood, so mm -hmm. really we should go in there, have you come in, and go yeah. in there and cut off those dead mm -hmm. limbs. Yeah, th this tree does have you know, a lot of large, low dead branches, and you know, dead branches can break out, and there's even you know, some broken and hanging branches in there as well. And then one of the trunks have like growths on it, and what do you call those growths? Yeah, so one of the trees that we're going to go look at is a, a tree that has red ring rot conks. Um, so these are, you know, conks that do indicate that there is decay in the tree. So that is also something that should be assessed, you know, by, by your arborist. And then another one, there's a fir tree, and if you didn't know it was a fir, but, you know, there's no leaves on it. So mm -hmm. really a lot's gone on with that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so, you know, de dead trees, you know, do have the possibility of being wind thrown. So, you know, if it's recently dead, might not be as big of a deal, but you know, de dead trees probably should be removed. Now you've covered a lot of things on this segment now, but if we forget all of them, is there kind of a cheat sheet on the website? Yes, uh, on our website, we, we do have a PDF um, of identifying hazardous trees. Uh, that would really help us all. So if you want to go to the Garden Time website, we do have a link to that PDF, and then you can go to the Bartlett website and maybe give them a call and have your trees assessed. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. You're welcome. We want to thank Terra Casa for letting us hang out today. And don't forget that all the independent garden centers have fresh greens and poinsettias for your home. And we also wanted to remind you there are only two more episodes in this year of Garden Time. However, don't forget we will be back next March of 2017. For any questions about today's show, please go to GardenTime.tv. Thanks so much for spending time with us today. And we look forward to doing it again next week right here on Garden Time. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.